This video is an overview of the five videos I've made in total, introducing George Orwell's 1945 novel, Animal Farm. It's a really important novel and has had a tremendous impact in the 20th century, but it is also highly unusual. And if you were visiting Earth from outer space and picked it up and read it, it probably would be very difficult for you to truly appreciate what's going on in the novel. Also, the world has changed considerably since the novel was written and several key parts of history are not as familiar to people these days as they were when the novel was written and so they need some explanation. Basically, the novel is unusual because it involves a setting on a farm in, Eng in the English countryside. There's a human owner of the farm and the animals have personalities. They can speak and so forth and they operate pretty much as human beings, they overthrow the owner of the farm and try to recreate a society there that is more equal and just and positive for them all. And of course, that goes horribly wrong. And that's what the novel kind of details. It appears to be a story for children, although, of course, it's quite dark. And some of the things that happen in it are quite horrific. In order to unlock what the novel's all about, it's important to understand that it is what we call an allegory. Now, an allegory is when you are using an extended metaphor in order to discuss something else. So on the surface, it's a story about animals, but beneath that, there's quite an, a complex subplot, which is talking about human beings and some fairly significant historical events and so forth. In particular, this novel, Animal Farm, is meant to represent George Orwell's views on what happened in the Russian Revolution of 1917, the communist revolution that overthrew the Tsar of Russia, a brutal dictator, and what happened after that. Originally, it was a revolution that inspired a lot of people. It, was, it had very noble aims in order to remake that society in a more equal way. Around the world, a lot of people look to it as um, for inspiration. But over time, George Orwell was of the view that over time, the aims of that revolution were lost. And in fact, the country itself ended up becoming a brutal dictatorship in another form. An animal farm is showing that process using animals and, and the farm as, as the setting. So my second video after this overview video will outline that. And the third video will help you to understand what communism was because it's when I was a kid, very large parts of the world were supposedly communists. They had governments which called themselves communists. And in fact, you can look at a map of the world from the early 1980s and see, you know, around a third of the, the world was, is coloured red and they are governments where there is a communist government running the country. So it was much more commonly seen these days there's only a handful of countries, four or five in the world, that have governments that call themselves communists. So it's not as big a deal in the world. So people are a lot less familiar with it than they used to be. But what I really want to make sure that people understand is that there's a big difference between communism, the theory, as it was outlined by, by Karl Marx, and as many, many revolutionaries around the world have hoped to see it introduced. It's designed to be a system of equality and where ordinary people get to, you know, take control of societies and run them in the interests of all. However, the way that it's been implemented around the world does not follow that outline. So there's a big difference between communism, communist countries and communist governments and the theory of communism. And my third video is going to go into that the fourth video is really about George Orwell himself, who he was, and how it came to be that he wrote this amazing novel, and also another amazing novel of his, 1984. They are both highly significant novels from this period. Why did he write them? What was going on for him? Who was he? And how did he come up with his own perspective on things? How did his own personal experiences inform what he thought about the world? And, and in fact, they did. He has a really, really, really interesting life, including having ex personally experienced some of the the events and dangerous situations that he depicts in Animal Farm. And that was through his involvement in the Spanish Civil War in the late 1930s, where he fought for some months. The fifth video in this small collection of introductory videos is, is about the historical context of Animal Farm. 
It was written during World War II, and that is significant in itself. He wrote it because he had messages he wanted people to listen to about Russia, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, as it was called then. He wanted people to listen to his messages about the USSR during World War II, because the USSR during World War II was an ally of England, and they were the victors. They were winning. They won the war together against the Nazis. And he had things he wanted known about the true nature, what he saw as the true nature of the USSR, who was at that time an ally of Great Britain. I also want to discuss in that final video what I think the enduring relevance and significance of Animal Farm is. George Orwell himself could not possibly have appreciated the fact that this novel now is something that we can often, people who've read it will often look at world events and go, goodness me, that's a little bit Animal Farm-like. And also 1984, his other novel, also has that enduring significance. Just recently watching Donald Trump taking the presidency and the whole debate about fake news, I thought again about Animal Farm, which I teach regularly, and I thought, you know, this is really about what Orwell was talking about in terms of whoever it is that manages to control information has an enormous power in that contest over who is in charge of, of creating the information that we take as true. That That is really, really, really powerful and increasingly powerful. I also thought that it has a lot to say about populist leaders and the way that individuals through their kind of strength of the way that they speak, through telling lies, through having strong groups of muscle men around them as the pigs do in, in um, Animal Farm. It reminded me, I took my kids to see Beauty and the Beast just the other day, and it reminded me of Gaston and the way he was able to swing the village against the beast and so forth in that scene in the, um, in the tavern. So for me, I see it everywhere. Populist leaders, the way they're able to pull people in behind them, the way they create scapegoats, they organise witch hunts and target groups of people, all of those sorts of things I see as in, uh, enduring things that Orwell was able to point out in Animal Farm. Also tribalism, the way that groups sort of band together and don't critically listen to other people and their ideas they follow people blindly and with loyalty, which is, you know, a good trait in many respects, but also can lead to people just accepting and not being critical and not standing up to things which otherwise might be wrong. So all of those things are in Animal Farm. They were relevant in Orwell's time and they are highly relevant to us now. So I hope you do look in on my other videos. Thanks, everyone.